I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what might happen in the next week, and what we hope are a lot of opportunities and ideas throughout the show. The stock market had a choppy week, really trading in a narrow range, uh, ES, the uh, S&P um, 500 futures trading uh, only in an 18 point range. Take a look at the S&P 500 chart and you will see barely moving in there uh, after having the big gains. Uh, while the S&P has stalled, the Dow has stalled also, the NASDAQ and the Russell still have been stronger. In fact, the NASDAQ gaining uh, some 2% on the week, all helped by good earnings from Google, Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. We'll take a look at some of those charts a little bit later on in the show. Uh, investors' focus was really on central banks, as both the FOMC and the Bank of Japan uh, we're going to give their policy statements this week, Wednesday for here in the U.S., and then late Thursday night for the Bank of Japan. Neither of them did very much or said very much. Um, no matter how they spin it, the economies are weak, and that's why we have zero or negative interest rates uh, throughout the world. And it's all about, if you think about Japan, the huge burden of debt that they have and the struggling with their demographics. Um, they're really in a lot of trouble at their huge debt to GDP. And the United States, though not as bad, uh, has similar issues in here. Um, Yellen talks about the economy, labor force starting to get better in the short term. Absolutely no focus on the long term at, at all. Uh, and hints that we will have gradual increases in rates. Let's say hints about that again. Uh, and they are scared about the strong dollar. That's why they don't want to raise rates. Stronger dollar uh, makes our goods less competitive, uh, uh, has money flowing uh, into um, this country and out of Europe, which then makes you know uh, a, be a benefit to Europe because their currencies are cheaper. And they, they don't they don't want to get in this uh, battle, this currency battle that just seems to be going on and on, or they want to try to stay out of it. Um, they also have this big facade that they're trying to create uh, of all of us being wealthy uh, because the asset prices are going higher, and they don't want to mess with that either. The same thing for Bank of Japan. They are trying to manipulate their asset prices also up. Uh, they're, they're realizing their failures is because Kuroda comes out and say they need to do a policy review. Uh, really, the three arrows aren't working. Um, and the shocking thing is that, well, they didn't announce anything new, no helicopter money, no new QE, but they are going to buy more ETFs. Uh, and that's the proof of what they're trying to do. It makes no sense. And the sickest thing of all is that they say they only own one-third of all of the government bonds in Japan. One-third is owned by their central bank. Um, the, uh, you know, I can't help but be beating up on the central banks all the, t all the time because I think they're the destroyers. They're the ones that have caused all of our issues for decades in here. Bill Gross finally has gotten on the same page as I, as he said, this week the Fed is clueless, and I think it's true. Strong dollar, though, forget about it. What the Bank of Japan did really drove the yen to the upside. The dollar fell very hard. We got ourselves set up for that uh, because there were a couple of currencies that we thought were making bottoms, uh, British pound, Canadian dollar, and uh, we have some nice setups going there. Uh, as far as economic news goes, um, home ownership, um, 52-week low as uh, homes become less affordable as 0% interest rates or 3.5% mortgages 
um, push up ho home prices, uh, and uh, that number has pretty has fallen pretty poor poorly. Though uh, recently um, we've had record amount of new home sales, so that's kind of contradictory. Um, but really, what it is is that you know home sales is kind of a short-term number, and uh, the fact that home ownership is falling is a long-term and structural issue. Um, as far as the GDP goes, we got our next revision in there, and uh, we're uh, only growing at a 1.2% pace. Nice job, Fed, with the great experiment. Gold up $28 on the week, approximately. Silver, a big surge one day, uh, trading about 3% up on the week. Oil down $3 on the week, and that's in spite of the fact that Friday it finally got an uptick, uh, popping about a buck on some uh, short covering would be my guess, but really a tough week in there, relentless selling going on, and lots and lots of belief that these uh, oil prices are going a lot lower based mo mainly on a gasoline glut. Um, we are, by the way, uh, only 101 days from the election. Let's take a look at our 60-minute chart, and uh, that's uh, the um, ES uh, on a 24-hour period, where we have our notes for what pushed the market around for the week. Here is that 60-minute chart. And what you could see here is that on Monday, um, we had a, um, a, a market that chopped around overnight, uh, but then got some selling that came in early in the morning, uh, and the market started to take a pretty big hit that you can see right over there. Morgan Stanley talked about that gasoline glut, and that really uh, pushed the oil price down. But then we had the late rebound right in here, as you can see. And uh, uh, news came out, by the way, that Verizon is buying all of Yahoo's internet assets uh, for $4.8 billion. So uh, there goes a Yahoo, um, as we know it anyway. On Tuesday, uh, Steve Fallow came out and talked about a restaurant stock recession and that uh, the restaurant stocks were telling us about some pretty good weakness for the consumer. And uh, that really got this big decline going in here early in the day. And But then again, uh, the market chopped around despite the fact that um, we had oil uh, really weak during the day also. But we got a big rebound in there also. On Wednesday, oil inventories came out. You can see what happened right over here. Uh, a surprise build uh, and uh, gasoline, a big surprise build. There's supposed to be a draw uh, in this season it's a seasonal draw and uh because of all the summer driving but that didn't happen so we got a big break here in oil and gasoline and that broke the es the but then again for the third day in a row one two and three strong closes the market is having a hard time staying down but it's having a hard time going up too Thursday uh, brought uh, more weakness in oil and analysts starting to talk about $35 oil. Everybody was waiting for the Bank of Japan, uh, but you could see market sold off early and for the fourth day in a row, closed strong late in the day. Friday, the news came out about the Bank of Japan and uh, you can see that, you know, they were a little nervous overnight right over here, all this chop going on right there. And then uh, as the markets opened on uh, these earnings reports helping and this bounce in oil of a dollar right there, you got this pop in the market. And then as we're uh, recording this with just an hour left to go in the day, the market has just been choppy sideways. We have been in this 18 point range for the week, a very tight range for the E-mini S&P and uh, we're gonna break out of that range before you know it. And uh, as we get into the um, uh, short-term view, uh, I'm gonna show you that I kind of think it's gonna break out of the range this week. In what direction? We're gonna have to see the end of the show. Let's take a look at our earnings and economic calendar for this week. Earnings reports finally starting to slow down. Man, it has been a just deluge of them. Uh, you can see the stocks that uh, report before the opening, Monday through Friday in here, and the stocks after the close right in here. Big one we'll be watching is this Tesla report here on Wednesday. 
uh, and uh, LinkedIn would have been a big one, right? But they got taken over, so not that big a deal. And as far as earnings and economic reports go, uh, the biggest one is the employment situation right over here, uh, 8.30 Eastern time on Friday. Uh, nothing much that can really move the market before that, except people will be watching the private sector ADP report here as some indication, but it's not always a great indication as to what is happening uh, as far as that Friday employment numbers. That's often a big mover. That's the opening segment for today, and uh, we're going to be right back with the best and the worst of the week. Best of the week was mostly earnings again, one buyout in there to look at. Biggest movers of the week really were in the steel category. It seems investors are celebrating iron ore getting back over $60 a ton. Wow, that's, you know, $200 a ton or more is what we were looking at some years ago. So I don't know if this is a great reason to celebrate, but we had U.S. Steel report earnings doing a nice job, actually, a big beat, and they've guided higher. So that was the biggest gainer of the week, 29%, really soaring on the upside. Let's take a look at those steel stocks, and you can see right over here in U.S. Steel, that big gain, that big green zone. Uh, again, I want to repeat that it was just some weeks ago, uh, maybe four or five, that we talked about this blue line right over here. That was suggestive of the DBB, which are the base metals, all turning up during that period. And you can see this monstrous move in, we've had in here as you get a double in just a couple of months in U.S. Steel. Big move on the upside in there, and uh, who could argue with that? It's gotten up through this major 50% right over there, which is a monstrous move. We actually think that U.S. Steel has actually gone too far. There's that, you know, major 61.8% up there, about 31 bucks. We don't think that there's a chance that it's going to get up that far. Long uh, distance in here on the upside. We consider this on a short term exceptionally overbought. That's based on the distance of the price of the stock to its 13-day moving average or 89-day moving average, depending on how you measure it. So quite overbought in there. I think they're celebrating too quickly in this stock. AK Steel up 18%. You could see big gains in there also. And you can see our projection really is that this one is going to roll over and go into a corrective period. Just as these cycle lines in here, these brackets are saying that corrective period is not that far off. So 18% gain for AKS, ATI, Allegheny uh, Technologies, another steel company. You can see that uh, also moving up during the same period, coming up to a pretty good resistance zone right there. It might be the place it stalls, or it might be the spot it accelerates up for just a short period of time. Overall, the steel's real monsters this week. One uh, buyout to report, LLTC. It's not one I trade very much. Do keep track of it. Look at that. I mean, just an absolutely beautiful upside move as uh, ADI is going to acquire it. And uh, so linear technology, uh, that stock is going to be gone, as you can see that. I want you to notice something interesting in here. See these notes in here of the bullish configurations right in there? That's uh, when a stock is in an uptrend. You can see that the lows are higher, and you can see that right there. And uh, just a, a nice-looking stock said these patterns suggested it was going to get above this level right over here. I had no idea about anything like that at all. Just nice when it fits into the whole package. Uh, a stock, another stock that makes a big upside move uh, is CNX. Uh, this stock is in the coal category, and you can see it's been really, <coughs> excuse me, uh, chugging its way on the upside. And uh, you really got to wonder, um, this one had good earnings and analysts have upgraded it, but you know, uh, with all of this uh, talk uh, from Hillary Clinton about uh, wanting to, um, well, I, I want to say not be real supportive of the coal miners, I'm going to be delicate. Um, uh, with Trump uh, taking a lead in the polls, you got to just wonder if that isn't one of the reasons you're getting buying in there in CNX. Uh, we had uh, some other 
strong gainers in there. GoPro, uh, GPRO, that's up 13% on the week. Um, the analysts are talking about that one returning to profit. So it was a, a nice gain in there. Pandora, uh, that's P, that's up about 10% on the week. Um, I think this one is a sell. I mean, I don't think this stock has uh, got much of a chance in there. Let's take a look at this Pandora. Uh, and th the reason I'm so negative on it, not only is the uh, chart pattern, um, which uh, has, uh, you know, just crept up up here, modestly making a new high during this rising phase. That's this phase right in here. So it modestly getting above that last cycle pattern. And you got this sell pattern right in there as it tries to get a big up week on some news. But I, I just don't think that this stock, based on fundamentals and you know, it doesn't earn much money, and the competition in here is just outrageously tough for this stock. I think somewhere down the road you're going to see this stock in single digits again. It's not all that far, but 1365 now, I think it's below 10 bucks again before you know it. So, um, Pandora, I'm not excited about this one at all. Uh, here's, here's one that's uh, risen from the dead, potentially. Here's that BlackBerry chart, and you can see... Um, that this one has been in this rising phase right over here. Um, it seems like they are getting interested in this stock. It would have to get above this level to have a base completed, which would be, let's say, about 840, 830 on this stock uh, is where that resistance is. So it's still got a ways to go. But you can see it's pretty early in this rising phase, and I'm a buy the dipper in this one. I think that this stock uh, is looking like investors are getting interested. You could get some short covering in there, a little bit of a squeeze, and maybe they have a real product that's coming out. So um, I, I think this one, if it pulls back based on this, uh, you could buy the dip in it. Not bad when you look at BlackBerry. As far as gold and silver stocks goes, um, they had um, some decent upside uh, moves also this week as gold got some legs as the dollar pulled back. <coughs> Uh, PAAS, the silver stock, up about 10%, and uh, Barrick, um, Barrick Gold uh, up uh, about 8%. Let's take a look at that GDX, which is the um, uh, gold mining index. And uh, we had talked about it as uh, getting ready to move up when we do our future speak. Uh, and uh, you can see it's had a nice week in here. Now, be, uh, I'll show you later on in the show. I, I have doubts about gold being able to make a lot more upside progress now. So you can kind of see we're looking for this to roll over. But what a giant year this has had. And yes, this is on our list of the best for 2016. So uh, really beautiful moves in there. It's you know I, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me to see some decent amount of rest in there, uh, even for a couple of months. So we're going to look for maybe only a little more upside progress here in the GDX, uh, which gained 8% on the week. You can see here on the daily chart that uh, rhythm that we're talking about that shows that uh, this is gold, this blue uh, bracket, and this is the GDX here, how there's an alignment there. We thought this was a corrective period and this was a rising period, and you can see we have that right in here. So the next corrective period out over here takes you into August, and that's kind of what we think is going to happen in the GDX, something uh, like that. Um, let's talk about some of the biggies in here because we had a lot of the big uh, NASDAQ stocks reporting. They did really well, and that's what's really been uh, getting the NASDAQ to uh, way outperform the S&P 500 this week. Um, let's take a look at Google, Apple, uh, and uh, those are the two that we'll look at. And let's uh, talk a little about Facebook and Amazon. So uh, let's take a look as I put up this Google chart, and I'm going to do G-O-O-G-L. That's the one that I follow, and of course the parent company here is Alphabet. So uh, here is that chart in Google. So the left chart is the weekly chart, the right chart is the daily chart. We're going to focus in here at the weekly chart, and we actually have what looks like we're just going to be a closing, all-time closing weekly high right now. So uh, here's the stock, big gains in here for the week as it is up about 6% on the week. Uh, and uh, they had really strong mobile ad sales, so that's really what gave this a lift. Now, Facebook also had very strong mobile ad, up about 3% on the week. 
uh, and uh, also a strong performer. So uh, that looks like it's really the theme at the moment. And you can see the uh, cyclical patterns right in here. And you can see this one right in here follows that perfectly. The low do right there and then this rising zone right up through these resistances right over here and then the high right over here. So that would be a uh, spot that we would expect it to potentially run into some trouble right around that old inner day high at about 18, at about uh, 810. The next one we're going to look at is Apple, AAPL. And uh, this one, you can see a big week also up about 6% on the week. Big surprise in here on the increase in iPhone sales. Nobody expected that with iPhone 7 yet to come out. So uh, it uh, probably has a problem here in this area uh, up to uh, about 107. We'll give it two, three more points on the upside, and that's about it. Amazon gains about 2% on the week. And that is um, uh, just a minor gain, but again, been a super, super strong stock uh, as it uh, reported earnings also, and it had a big beat. So Apple, Google, um, Facebook, Amazon all had beats, and the stocks all did well. And that's why the NASDAQ has been so much stronger. That's the best of the week, and we'll be right back with the worst. For the worst of the week, well, the 10 worst stocks out of my 325 that I look at got cratered on earnings reports. We're going to look at the worst one in here is Akamai, A-K-A-M. Is this stock uh, just gets a, a huge hit in here. Um, and the earnings missed, revenues missed, analysts all over this thing downgrading it. Uh, and uh, a, a big high volume gap on the downside. I'm going to show you uh, that gap uh, on the daily chart here. Now, uh, a note in here that um, this, uh, this is unusual and that this we were looking for this uh, corrective decline in here, yet it took so long, I mean, only till this last week in here for it to really come. So you can see the small patterns right in there as it did this right like this, which is not really a bad shape for this pattern at all. It's just that you had to wait so long for a break if you believed that you were going to get it. This looked like a bullish pattern overall setting up, but then when you get these big downside gaps, uh, it really looks like a lot of trouble. Now, if you uh, are a member and you go look in my uh, video on uh, earnings gaps, on high volume gaps, what I talk about in there is that big high volume gaps usually start something or end something. So when you get this kind of a, I just showed you that there's not a lot of time for decline on the weekly pattern that we're looking at. So my guess is this hammer bottom and this high volume is kind of going to end that. But then when you get these big gaps, the best you usually do is get back up to the moving averages. So I think this stock is a broken stock and that it's likely to get some kind of chopping around here and maybe make a little more upside progress but you can see where this 13 day moving average is and this 89 day moving average I think it gets up near that uh, convergence there 53 54 and then rolls over and really starts to get hit again this is a bad pattern when you look at that in Akamai take a look at Hartford group HIG in the insurance category 11% on the downside in here um, they had a big break on uh, their asbestos claims and as you can figure for uh, these type of companies that really depend a lot on investments um, their investment income is way down and that just shows you that it's tough in this market Th this is the pattern we're in you can see that rally and then this sell-off that's this right in here and that has about another four or five weeks to go so uh, a big downside gap on the daily chart in that one also and I think that Hartford Group is a sale if uh, I get a little bit of a rally in here now a uh, Cigna CI they uh, missed on earnings they guided down down 11% on the week they have had you know this deal with the um, anthem uh, blocked by the Department of Justice and that's really been a mess in here and this big reversal this big downside 
uh, engulfing pattern that you see there. That is an awful looking pattern, isn't that? And when you get that big kind of reversal, it's only like four weeks into this rally. The way the pattern shapes up is that, well, this is what you have right in here, and that's likely to shape up something like this, where it just chops around, trades down for the next month, tries to rally, and then gets wailed on again. The only thing that could save this is if the Department of Justice gets out of the way. That's not likely. Anthem down 7% on the week also. And uh, I think uh, that uh, these HMOs are going to continue to struggle. That is, unless Hillary Clinton does not get elected, and uh, then it'll be a whole different picture. Next one we're going to look at in here is Twitter. It's down 10% on the week. And you can see in here, the stock gets up into this resistance zone. It's been in this miserable stair-step downward move that it's had. Built a base in here. And, you know, after LinkedIn got taken over, you had Twitter moving up. You had Yelp moving up all on the hope that we were going to get some more buyouts in that uh, sector. Here's that 34-week moving average coming right down into that resistance area, and the stock really has a bad earnings report. Uh, down 10% on the week. Their outlook was much weaker, and without a savior coming in, um, the stock just does not look very good. Whole Foods is another one. The stock has really had a problem uh, based on the, you know, the people believe it's a very high price place to shop. I mean, good food uh, and, of course, Whole Foods. But they uh, are really struggling. In fact, when you look at this pattern where the stock comes down from 57 over here all the way down to 28, so it was, you know, cut in half. Um, then what you have is this pattern going on right now, which is essentially a big bear pennant being formed. So it could barely get a rally in here off of that huge break. Earnings come out and uh, their uh, earnings were. Uh, oh, you know, just down a little bit probably, but uh, sales were much weaker than expected. You could see that right there. And uh, this pattern right here is what we're looking at right in here. And that's something like this. And then break that pennant is really what I think is going to happen. That's some months of trading that we just pointed to. Take a look here at this daily pattern. What's really interesting here is that it made a bearish island here on the daily chart right over here where it got really far from this moving average. So that's really a sign of, you know, some reversion to the mean getting back to that moving average, which, of course, it did. Then it came over here and reported earnings. And I just think this stock is a sick stock, as I just showed you. And uh, back to that weekly chart that we were looking at. And that says to me, um, just, uh, you know, any uptick in here, and I think it's a fake. I think there's a lot more downside to see in there. Western Digital, WDC. Um, this one, um, interesting, their earnings beat, uh, and the stock went down. And I actually think what's going on here is uh, they have some indigestion going on because they, they gulped up SanDisk. Uh, and I think that, you know, they're just, uh, the stock has taken some profit taking in here. But you can see for our uh, chart subscribers, our projection that we have in here, and that is some corrective period, maybe the next few weeks, and then taking off again. You could see that would, you know, make an inverted head and shoulders and project quite a bit higher. That's how we see it. We kind of think that it would be just a little bit of a down tick. We're going to say buy it in two to three weeks uh, as it just uh, messes around down in here. It'd be beautiful to buy it around 44, let's say, because I think the stock is going to be up in the 60s sometime uh, in the next six months, let's say, something like that based on this pattern. So Western Digital is one I like. Talked uh, about uh, the um, uh, HMOs just a couple of minutes ago. Um, the same attitude uh, I think investors have uh, about uh, the biotech stocks because uh, just as um, Hillary Clinton does uh, not want them to be able to have pricing power, uh, uh, I think that that's the case for the 
for the biotech stocks also. Gilead is one that everybody has loved. They really believe that it's been able to really maintain pricing uh, and uh, everybody has you know, up until s some months ago this has been a real favorable stock they came out with their earnings report uh, their earnings beat but their outlook was weak and man what they said about their hep C drug really put a nail in the coffin on this stock you can see what's happened in here and a beautiful look at what a stair step downward pattern looks like cyclically as uh, you can see the big big pattern right in here that's this one right over here and the ones that make up about half of it you can see that right over here we got into another rally and then this big downside week right over here on that news on the hep C drug and this points it down and the stock is going to have a lot of problems still I could see the stock down in the 60s pretty easily take a look at this chart right over here the daily chart and uh, we have our cyclical patterns in here also and here's a big downside gap this is called a bear kicker pattern what makes it a kicker well it comes up to a high of a rally note right at the 89 day moving average nails it in our resistance zone right there and uh, then the news comes out and uh, leaves this big gap and this big downward move over here that's a big bear kicker momentum uh, now crossing over to the negative side that's the slim ribbon right over there giving you that signal and this stock um, if it tries to pick up its head it's going to be a short sale based on the shorter term patterns we're looking at in here I would kind of think that what will happen is that it take another week or so to settle down here it'll get a rally and that rally is going to be a shorting opportunity right somewhere up there so we'll be watching for that one and uh, Gilead I think this one has got a lot of problems in the motor category uh, one of the stocks that I've been very favorable on is Ford Motors their earnings were really disappointing in here and uh, they were very cautious on their outlook let's take a look here at this chart in Ford and uh, you'll be able to see uh, a stock that has gone from really looking pretty decent to a stock that may have some problems and what it right what it might be doing is just really consolidating uh, because it it put on what we call a bullish uh, configured cycle so in other words it was down all this time and then you got this bullish cycle right here that ended above where it began and then you got the rally exactly as we expected we expected a minimum target up to that level the last peak right over there it missed it by a fraction and then this news comes out and it puts up a big gap I actually believe this stock is going to trade between this 12 and 13 dollar area for a while maybe this uh, couple of months in here before it can get legs and move back up in there to the upside so uh, really caught they were really cautious and that really uh, set investors off on this one McDonald's now look at this stock in here does is that head and shoulders screaming at you in there um, I think the stock has made a major top down 7% on the week their same store sales were weak and I think they got everybody faked but with this all day breakfast thing that they did like you had to own this stock because they were going to be selling eggs or egg sandwiches all day um, that makes a lot of sense so it came right up here to the 78 percent number in this rising phase and then had this big failure there's that big head and shoulders I think it's over I honestly do I think it may try to get an uptick and save itself up around this 116 level a couple points down but then I think it's going to roll over, break that, and fall all the way over here into October. And uh, I don't know if it'll go that deep, but that's where some big supports are, down uh, somewhere around 104, 103. So that's a bad, bad-looking pattern we're looking at there. And take a look here. There's another one of those big bear kicker patterns and momentum turning weak in here. Again, this is the slim ribbon. So if you're a TOS user, um, you can just uh, go to my website and go to resources and download that uh, script for that TOS uh, for your TOS platform. And you'll have the slim ribbon right on your own platform. So that's asslim.com. So uh, that's uh, a look at McDonald's and a look at a stock that is just a broken stock, big head and shoulders, as you can see, 
right over there is that head and shoulders and uh, I think it's going to be a problem stock moving forward. Last one for the worst of the week and there's been a lot here hasn't there is Under Armour UA another one of those stocks here's the daily chart right over here notice how it broke down just from just above that resistance gave you that big engulfing pattern right over there earnings reports come out it has a small miss really uh, but this is a sm uh, small miss but a big pattern and this really looks to me like it's rolled over uh, and uh, this would most likely be set up for some extended period of uh, weakness and you can see how we have that drawn in there's our uh, projected line and we would say any rally in here does look to us like a sale there's that daily chart again and note the minor support zone in here it's getting a little bit of support I think the shorting area is right around here this 89 day moving average to the 13 day that's 40 40 to about 40 90 uh, so a bounce in the stock and I think the stock is a sale also that's some bad stuff in there and that is our worst for the week and we're gonna be right be right back after a little 40 second promo here uh, with our short-term view. See you in a couple seconds. All right, short-term view of the coming week. We look at five major markets, look at the short-term charts. For us, that's the daily charts, and get a sense for what we think is going to happen in the next four to seven days. That's really what our focus is on. We always want to be accountable of what we say. That hasn't been hard to do in this last month because now four weeks in a row we've done a great job of reading these patterns. Uh, we're going to give ourselves an 80% this week. That's after four weeks ago being 90% and then the next two weeks at 70% and 80% this week. So when the stuff is stuff, sometimes it's like they're lobbing softballs at us and these patterns really work. There's other times we really struggle and people that watch us have seen that. So, But overall I think we do a good job. So we're going to look at these five markets. Uh, light crude, the gold market, the euro currency uh, as our proxy for the dollar, the um, uh, bond market, we'll look at the 10 years, S&P 500, and we'll take a peek at the VIX. Um, what we uh, missed on this week was light crude. We have a rare circumstance where we have one of our shortest term patterns, what we call doubling up on the cycle. In other words, there wasn't even a readable uptick in the middle of uh, uh, w one cycle to the next and that was just uh, an extended period on the downside and I would say that happens about 10 percent of the time and so it's a low odds uh, for us to see that and we didn't see it we really missed the light crude market that's the one we missed and the other four markets we got really right so let's take a look here at this light crude chart and we'll see if we could do a better job on it this week so what we're looking at in here is um, there are a few cycle patterns you could see that by these 
uh, brackets that are in here. And what we're looking at is just notice all these six to nines, in fact. You, they're so consistent, it's just incredible. And you could see that right in there. And what that is, is a repeating pattern that this bracket down over here uh, points to. And you could see this low on the day seven, this low on the day nine, this low on the day nine over here. So that's why the way that works. We expected uh, a low and then a rally and then more decline or further rally, depending on how this shaped up. What happened was, was that right at that point you didn't really get a rally this big negative momentum took hold and you could see that in the slim ribbon right over here I'm gonna take a little bit of a closer look for you to see right there and the the slim ribbon turned negative in momentum that was right over here and it's really prevented much in the way of upticks in fact you could see this rally here was only really a day day and a half and then it turned down that's extraordinary weakness finally here that's uh, either day seven off of this low or day 13 total you could see the double cycle that finally gives you a little sense that it's bottoming but we're suspicious it's not quite there yet especially with you know analysts out there screaming about $35 oil potentially again so we're gonna look for some more downward chop in here for maybe another couple of few days we see the best chance for an upturn somewhere in the second half of the week maybe Thursday or Friday and then when the upturn comes we think that those really near-term minor resistances are going to stop it. That comes up to about 43 bucks in the next one to two weeks in there as about the best that we see. So this is kind of the pattern we're looking for. Chop down, be a little weak, and then move up into the following week up into that area. So those that have been trying to pick the bottom in here uh, and have been long and wrong, you probably have a little more time to go I'm one of those I, I have started to I started to buy uh, oil stocks and haven't gotten that badly hurt on them uh, really right around this point right over here but the oil stocks have done a lot better than oil uh, so I'm really not doing that poorly in there and we're gonna wait a few days before we actually get into a, a long setup here in the oil market so this is the one we really got wrong gold market we said up week just like we thought in light crude we light crude which uh, we thought was gonna you know jump a, a, a couple of points uh, in the case of gold it actually did what we expected and here we'll take a look here at the gold market and uh, this uh, pattern, let's get a closer look right in here. Um, we had this period of nested lows that we said we thought we were going to get bottoms in gold and in the GDX right over here. And you could see that was practically perfectly timed. The silver low, which we expected over here, actually came a little bit earlier. But really, this was the time period we expected to get a rally. We thought this week would test resistance, 1346 to 1354. It's actually at 1361 right now. So it got through that minor resistance. We left that in there for you to see. So now what we expect in the gold market is that this area is around the 1360 to 1370 we believe is going to be a problem for it and that uh, on the short term we'll start to get some choppy action and rolling over um, th th that's really the zone I think there's an issue we thought along all along that 1310 to 1370 would be the range we tag 1310 over here and 1370 is right up over here so we think it's a minor attempt at rally still in here and then rolling over uh, for a bit of a correction. One of the things that we're looking at in there is that when this top occurred right over here, is there was, a, you see that engulfing pattern right there? There was a big weekly engulfing pattern in there. And that's likely going to give some resistance in this zone. So we're going to look for not much more upside in here. And then rolling over sometime, uh, maybe second half of the week, for a modest correction. So overall, we're expecting really a small change uh, week, not really uh, a whole lot of activity in there. So we'll just call it a small week, trying to rally, and then rolling over.
Next thing we're going to look at is the euro market. Uh, we expected that the dollar uh, would actually be uh, rolling over. We didn't know we would get quite the help uh, that we ended up getting from the um, uh, Bank of Japan, which uh, did nothing. So mm, these are very nice patterns. Let's get a closer look in here. We'll look at the last three patterns. Uh, and you can see this is what we're looking at right in here and how it's practically followed it perfectly. You can see that right there and then right over here. So uh, this was the rally we expected. Um, it, it, it's a little bit stronger than we expected, up about three quarters of a penny on the week. We thought it would be a small up week, and relative to the price, it is a small up week. And uh, we thought it would hit 1240 uh, to 1275. Uh, no, no, that's this week is what we think. We think it's going to hit uh, 1240 to 1275 in this resistance zone. And uh, it's gotten really close to it now. So you see this pattern in here is what we're going to look for right in here. Try to get up in here, roll over, and then maybe have a better time of it right over there. Uh, again, similar to what we see in gold, and gold and the euro often track each other because they are both inverse to the dollar. Um, that puts this area here, uh, 12, the peak up here right around, uh, we'll call it, um, 12, uh, 112.80, 112.70. Uh, and this area here is about 112.30ish uh, or so. So that's the zone we're going to look for, attempt to get up in there and uh, not be able to move through. Gold and um, the euro probably having small weeks uh, similar to each other because that's really how they trade. So small week in there and hitting that resistance. Next thing we're going to look at is the bond market forward slash ZN. So uh, what we thought last week is that if we would get a move, uh, a small up move uh, in the week to uh, 132.30 to 133.06. And we actually believe that would be a sell zone. We are now 133.03. So it came up and exactly hit our pattern. We're going to call this one a big bullseye. Uh, small up week as we expected right up into that resistance zone. We believe there is a lot of risk from here. So we're going to call this rolling over in here and then accelerating to the downside. We think that the intermediate pattern in here is pressing hard on the downside. How do I know that? What is even a tip in there? Well, first of all, if I look at the weekly chart, it shows me the kind of decline we had. But note the rising zone here and how sharply it moved up, m moved well past this last high. Note the rising period in here, moved well past this high right over here. Note the rising period in here, only just getting up to the minor resistance. That's what forms head and shoulders tops when they fail right over here. And that's really what we see right there. Notice how we drew that in there. And we think that from this zone, we're going to see some selling in here in the bond market. We have already notified our level three subscribers of that uh, and uh, getting right uh, nicely up into this zone. So that is the same pattern that we're seeing here in uh, ZN that we're seeing in ZB. We're going to call the bond market a down week coming up. So the stock market got stuck, really. Uh, when you look at the S&P 500 trading in that range, as we talked about earlier in the show, uh, really an incredibly narrow range uh, when you look at uh, this uh, chart right over here, the daily chart. We're, uh, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. What, what's going on is that the Dow has been weighed down by um, oil. Uh, the We've seen a big break in Exxon, which is part of that. Uh, the S&P 500 being affected by that. The Nasdaq stock's doing well and, uh, you know, showed you the, um, the big heavies in the Nasdaq and consistently moving up to a new high. So we're wasting a lot of time in here going nowhere. And I'll show you what that means. Um, we're relative to the um, phase of this cycle and this being a rising phase right in here 
this is the sideways chop that we're getting in there. This is a big resistance zone up there. This makes up fib confluences from a number of uh, different cyclical patterns in the past. And uh, last time we got up to that big confluence right over here, uh, you can see that big red zone. That one uh, then backed off pretty sharply from there. Now, we're right up over here now. We're wasting time. We have the NASDAQ ticking up. This rally period is the one that I said really tells the story, right? It's got to get legs and move up through this area up here above 2188, or the story's going to be told because it's going to move under this level right here. Uh, at uh, what is that 21 uh, 56 57 and roll over if it does that you're gonna know what the story is right here because this period will have ended and this period will have started and that will get you some selling here into this short-term support timing period right there I mean a risk of low 2100s if you break down here under this 2156 number my gut tells me that it's because it's wasting time not using this well that it'll try to get up into this zone over here this week uh, that area is that 2180 to 2188 number and then roll over and then get the breakdown this is what my notes look like they have that drawn on them because I think that is the highest probability based on what we're seeing this market is starting to struggle the election language has never been nastier uh, and uh, Trump uh, in the lead uh, has got to have the market scared investors scared and all of that really might be a setup for a failure so that's really an issue one more thing aligning with that right now uh, as I switch over to the weekly chart uh, I'm going to show you both the weekly and the daily in the VIX and uh, on the left side let's just look right here at those major patterns and let's just look right over here where we're getting to right now I'm showing you both of these is that right over here this upward pattern right there is about to start and implied volatilities could jump pretty sharply right in here that's one of the reasons I believe we're getting into a riskier time now when I look at this daily chart over here this one is pointing to just a couple of more days in here before the implied volatilities turn up right here so with this potential turn up in a couple of days this one due to turn up on the weekly pattern that says to me the odds are increasing of a failure in the S&P 500 that the stock market which has been getting this lift from um, third tier stocks in the Russell from a few of the big Nasdaq stocks pushing up that may be, not be enough and those things may be getting overbought so I think the risks are going up now I've been positive the patterns have been positive and we've gotten up and tested these areas that I've been talking about lots of people you know are on both sides of this uh, failure lots of reasons for failure uh, and uh, a market that won't give any ground and has looked very strong I've been on the short-term bullish camp and I'm now I'm going to say neutralizing to getting somewhat negative because we're getting into this period that I think the risks are increasing. The story will be told if we get up into that 2180 to 88 area and can't move through it and roll over 2156 is the number I'll be looking for in the S&P 500. I think that, that under that level it tells you a story also. So a story to be told here uh, in this week and that's what I've been talking about as we've gotten into it now. So talked about a lot of stuff, showed you a lot of things. I hope there has been opportunities uh, for you there and uh, I hope that these shorter term uh, patterns that we've been looking at have been speaking to you also and that has been uh, benefiting you in your trading. Love to hear about it. Send me some emails. Uh, hope that you do have a great week coming up, a safe weekend, and I'm always wishing you great trading.